Welcome back to Biomechanics. Today we will discuss the structure and mechanics of articular cartilage, as well as some of the changes that occur in diseases of the joints. As with all tissues, understanding the biomechanics of cartilage requires a knowledge of the molecular, cellular, and extracellular organization of the tissue across a large range of physical scales from nanometers to meters. There are three main types of cartilage. Hyalin or glassy cartilage found in the costal, nasal, tracheobronchial, fetal, and articular cartilage. White fibrocartilage is the cartilage in intervertebral and articular discs, as well as in the bony grooves where some tendons run. Finally, yellow elastic fibrocartilage is found in the ears, larynx, and epiglottis. We will focus on articular cartilage, which is found in articulating joints, such as the knee. Articular cartilage permits joint motion with minimal friction and wear, which is important since the lower extremities undergo about a million loading cycles per year. The articular joints also distribute and transmit stresses to the bone. Joint stresses can be static, such as when standing still, or dynamic, such as when walking or running. For example, one study reported 10 to 20 megapascal joint stresses during stair climbing. Peak compressive strains can be 15 to 45 percent and vary spatially within the tissue, especially across the cartilage thickness from the superficial to deep layers of the joint. Cartilage, like all tissues, is said to be biphasic, with about 20 percent solid components and 80 percent water. The cells, or chondrocytes, occupy 1-10% to of the cartilage volume, with young cartilage having a higher cell density and the lower number being more typical of adult cartilage. Chondrocytes synthesize the extracellular matrix and the enzymes that degrade the matrix. They therefore allow the joint tissue to respond to changes in biomechanical demands. The contribution of chondrocytes directly to the tissue mechanics is usually neglected. The matrix is primarily type 2 collagen, which occupies about 60% of the cartilage dry weight. Collagen provides tensile stiffness and strength and provides a mesh to immobilize the proteoglycans, which occupy about 30% of the dry weight of the tissue. They provide compressive stiffness and strength and promote hydration. Collagen architecture and cell morphology vary through the thickness of cartilage, which is divided into three distinct morphological zones. In the superficial or tangential zone, occupying the outer 10 to 20 percent of the cartilage thickness, collagen fibers are crimped and aligned tangentially to the surface. In the middle or transitional zone, occupying 40 to 60 percent of the thickness, collagen fibers are more randomly and isotropically aligned. Finally, in the inner 30% nearest the bone, known as the deep or radial zone, collagen fibers are primarily radial, i.e. perpendicular to the bone surface. Chondrocyte morphology also varies with cartilage zone. The cells are elongated and tangentially oriented in the superficial zone, but more rounded in the middle and radial zone. Proteoglycan monomers aggregate onto backbones of hyaluronic acid in an interaction stabilized by link proteins. Proteoglycan monomers have a protein core with 10 to 20 sugar polymers known as glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs, such as keratin sulfate, covalently attached. Glycosaminoglycans are highly charged acidic molecules due to their negatively charged sulfate and uronic acid groups. Consequently, the fixed charge density of articular cartilage is high, as much as minus 0.05 to 0.2 moles per liter. Electrostatic repulsion of neighboring gag polymers makes proteoglycans swell and resist compression. Electrostatic traction of positive counterions, such as sodium and protons, and repulsion of negative coions, like chloride, concentrates the cations and dilutes the anions. This ionic gradient creates an electrical potential known as the Donin potential that contributes to osmotic swelling. Proteoglycans thereby promote compressive stiffness and hydration of the tissue. Here we see on the top of this diagram a proteoglycan monomer with 
keratin sulfate and chondroitin sulfate gags. And below, we see the monomers all coming off the hyaluronic acid backbone of the proteoglycan aggregate. Loading of cartilage has multiple effects, including chondrocyte and fibrilla deformation, pressurization of the fluid phase, flow of the fluid phase, altered ionic concentration and charge density, and consequently altered osmotic pressure in the generation of electric fields known as streaming potentials. The fluid in between articular joints and within the cartilage itself it is synovial fluid. It is a viscous non-Newtonian fluid with about the consistency of egg whites. It is a blood plasma ultrafiltrate, so it has plasma proteins and electrolytes, but it also contains hyaluronic acid secreted by fibroblast-like cells in the synovial membrane and a lubricating proteoglycan known as lubricin secreted by the chondrocytes in the superficial zone cartilage. Synovial fluid gives cartilage impressively low friction and wear. Cartilage friction can be tested cartilage on cartilage with or without synovial fluid, as seen here, or cartilage on another material, such as glass. Here are the coefficients of friction for various articular joints. Typical values are as low as 0.01 or less. Let's compare these friction coefficients to some other materials, and you will see that cartilage friction is one to two orders of magnitude lower. The coefficient of friction decreases with the number of loading cycles in this experiment in a hip joint. Note that the coefficient of friction also decreases with the load as we go from the open circles here to the closed triangles, as more synovial fluid is squeezed out of the joint tissue. The coefficient of friction is higher in unlubricated than lubricated joints. However, as the load increases, the difference becomes smaller and eventually disappears, presumably because synovial fluid is being squeezed out of the unlubricated cartilage. The tensile properties of cartilage are tested in a similar way to those of other soft collagenous connective tissues and the uniaxial stress-strain relation looks very similar to what we've seen in other tissues, with a toe region and a linear region prior to a failure. The elastic stiffness of cartilage is in between that of tendons and skin. Note that as the collagen structure varies with position in the joint and with injury and disease, the tensile properties change. The more aligned collagen in the superficial zone makes the tensile stiffness of this tissue higher than in the deeper zones. Collagen damage caused by wear or injury, known as fibrillation, slightly affects the tissue stiffness, but the collagen matrix degradation that occurs in osteoarthritis greatly impairs the elastic stiffness of cartilage tissue. Cartilage can be tested in shear by twisting a cylindrical core sample. The shear properties are primarily attributable to tension in obliquely aligned collagen fibers. Low friction makes shear stress and strains low in healthy cartilage, but it can be higher in diseased cartilage. Shear testing can also be done dynamically by applying an oscillating twist to the specimen. A complex shear modulus can then be measured. Its magnitude, the dynamic shear modulus seen here, increases with the collagen content seen by testing different types of sample. The commonest cartilage load in the most popular mechanical test is compression testing. One type of compression test is called the confined compression test. In this test, the specimen is confined to a chamber so that it cannot bulge outwards as it's compressed. The sample deforms under compressive load because the piston that compresses the specimen has holes in it, making it freely permeable to the synovial fluid. Here we see a stress relaxation test where a compressive downward displacement is applied as a linear ramp in time and then held constant. As the synovial fluid squeezes out of the cartilage, the compressive force decays as the pressure in the fluid phase decreases. 
Conversely, a creep response will be seen in the same setup when a constant compressive load is applied to the specimen, which creeps as the fluid is squeezed out of the cartilage. When the load is removed, the combination of electroosmotic and hydrostatic forces in the tissue will draw the fluid back into the cartilage. The asymptotic elastic modulus for a confined compression relaxation or creep experiment is called the equilibrium confined compression modulus, HA. It can be measured incrementally for progressive increments in steady state stress, delta sigma, and plotted against the strain. Seen here, the slope of this experiment is the confined compression equilibrium modulus, which you can see increases with load. Increasing the amount of negatively charged uronic acid in the tissue by increasing the proteoglycan content increases the fixed charge density and can be seen to increase the confined compression equilibrium modulus significantly. This shows how important the electroosmotic forces are in determining the equilibrium confined compression modulus. Conversely, increasing the salt concentration decreases the fixed charge density because the gags attract and concentrate positive sodium ions. This has the effect of decreasing the equilibrium confined compression modulus. In the same way that dynamic shear properties can be measured, so can dynamic compressive properties. Oscillating compressive displacements are often superimposed on the static load as seen here. In this dynamic compression experiment, in addition to the amplitude and phase of the complex compressive modulus, these authors have measured the amplitude and phase of the electrical streaming potential. Note how similar the changes in these properties are with frequency. This again suggests that electrostatic effects are very important in cartilage mechanics. As articular cartilage matures from fetus to adult, the biochemical content and mechanical properties of cartilage change. The collagen content increases markedly by two to fourfold. Collagen crosslinks increase approximately a sevenfold, making the tissue stiffer, but proteoglycans do not change markedly. Correspondingly, the tensile modulus increases four to tenfold, the compressive modulus increases about twofold, and cartilage permeability decreases about 70% as the porosity decreases. Chronic loading affects the synthesis of matrix components in cartilage. For example, static compression inhibits biosynthesis of proteoglycans and collagen, whereas dynamic compression stimulates biosynthesis of collagen and proteoglycans at low magnitudes and high frequencies. In contrast, dynamic tension inhibits biosynthesis for strains above 10%. One popular way to model cartilage mechanical properties is to use a so-called mixture theory model. The basic assumptions of this theory are that the cells do not contribute to the physical properties and can be ignored, that cartilage consists of incompressible solid and fluid phases, that the solid matrix is elastic and typically isotropic, there is viscous drag that is linearly proportional to the fluid velocity relative to the solid and characterized by the hydraulic permeability, and more advanced theories can also account for the osmotic pressure due to negatively charged proteoglycans. Electrical current flow and streaming potentials can also be included in advanced models. This is a prediction of a so-called biphasic model of cartilage for creep during confined compression. The model is shown in the solid line and approximates the experimental measurements shown as these dots quite well. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease associated with tissue wear and tear. Gross changes include erosion of the joint surface and reactive bone formation. Microscopic changes include fissures in the articular surface and cell division. The incidence of osteoarthritis increases with aging, obesity, and joint injury. Osteoarthritis is extremely common, with 80% of Americans over age 65 showing some radiological evidence of the disease. Treatments include analgesics and, when more severe, total joint replacement. Potential causes include excessive joint loading and inflammation-mediated matrix degradation. As the matrix loses mechanical stiffness in osteoarthritis, 
the strain increases beyond the optimal range for matrix synthesis seen here to higher values which result in matrix damage, cell death, and surface fissures. Osteoarthritis is progressive, starting with fraying of the surface and fibrillation of collagen, erosion and pitting of the cartilage surface and bone growth, and ultimately complete loss of cartilage and bone-on-bone -bone contact and fibrosis of the joint capsule. In osteoarthritis, the proteoglycan content is decreased, water content increases, the equilibrium confined compression modulus decreases, hydraulic permeability increases, and streaming potentials decrease. A less common type of arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis. It's an autoimmune disease that tends to be inherited. Gross changes include synovial thickening due to inflammation, the formation of a panis, which is an abnormal layer of fibrovascular or granulation tissue, and erosive destruction of cartilage and bone. Microscopic changes include synovial cell proliferation, cartilage destruction, especially under the panis layer. Treatments include immunosuppressive drugs or, when more severe, total joint replacement. Potential causes of rheumatoid arthritis include inflammatory processes and enzymes and stimulation of chondrocyte-mediated matrix degradation. Here we see the progressive stages of rheumatoid arthritis, which include acute inflammation of the synovial membrane, synovitis, and the beginning of proliferative changes. Progression of inflammation with panis formation, beginning destruction of the cartilage and often mild osteoporosis in the bone. In the third phase, inflammation subsides, but fibrous ankylosis or joint fusion starts to occur. And in the final phase, bony ankylosis and advanced osteoporosis set in. Modern research on cartilage is especially focused on how the chondrocyte and other cell types maintain the tissue and how these processes are dysregulated by abnormal mechanical loading and inflammation. So in summary, we've seen that hyaline cartilage occurs at articular joints. Fibrocartilage is found at other joints and locations. Articular cartilage bears frictional and compressive loads at joints. Cartilage is highly hydrated with few cells and no vessels. The fibrillar collagen solid phase enmeshes charged proteoglycans and synovial fluid. Solid matrix elasticity, fluid pressure and viscosity, electrical charge density, and osmotic chemical balance all contribute to the viscoelastic mechanical properties of cartilage. Cartilage coefficient of friction is very low, 0.01 or less. Cartilage is often tested in compression. Mixture theory models cartilage as a composite of elastic solid and viscous fluid, sometimes with osmotic pressure due to charge density included. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis lead to joint degeneration.